Hello guys and welcome to a new war game commentary by me Vulcan. Today I am again playing on my favourite map Rivers of Blood and I am again packed. But today instead of showing you a normal 1v1, this is very different. I try out a actual rush strategy. The first video I made of war game was a rush strategy but it was for fun and uh, this one I played more seriously so hopefully you'll be able to get tips from how to, or how to rush from this video if you like that sort of playstyle. This video is probably going to be about 12 minutes long because that's how long the game lasted roughly and um, yeah it's pretty cool so anyway if I speed up the deployment I can show you what the tactics were Okay, so I'm not going to uh, cover what he had just yet, but I have picked up the uh, four units of two Topaz 2As, which have the Moto Shulky in that I was talking about in my last video, which I used to rush down the left side. Um, I have four T80s. These are the cheapest T80s you can get. They are they cost 90 each, and I have four strops for four T80s. I normally go for one strop per T80 just because it allows me to judge roughly how much anti-air I'll need for the value of the tank. Um, I've got two BDRMs, one for capturing in one for capturing India because I felt that it would be rel relatively safe to do so, considering that I was going to rush down the left side. I've got two MI9 um recon helicopters which are very important for rush strategies you definitely don't want to underestimate your recon you need recon to do rush because if you bump into anything that's going to completely obliterate your army like a flamethrower then you really need to know it's there before it's too late um, these two BTRs have iglers in for base A8 and these two topazes will cover the top bridge and they come in very handy later these MI-24s are just light um, aircraft support for the push. So, now the game has started. I continue to move my defense defenses into position, unload the Iglers as soon as possible, and get these up into their respective positions. I send the BDRM to India, and I begin to move my forces out of my base with the recon in front. Now, as I was saying earlier, it's very important, very, very important on any rush strategy to have good recon. You can see this enemy, the enemy player has done exactly the same. Now, he's got two uh, heavy recon choppers, just like me, um, and he has also gone for a reasonably large rush strategy. Now my MI9s spot his Kiowas and vice versa, but I think at this point he was too busy trying to find out what I have, like I was trying to find out what he has, so they don't engage me. My recon helicopters don't have uh, machine guns or anything, but they are much more healthy. My MI24s, I use these as the middle rush helicopters. These. Uh, managed to spot his big rush. I didn't really expect him to rush at all so this was a massive surprise to me and you can see that as my troops move up uh, to attack their forces I split them off and uh, send my Vidiscari which are shot uh, at infantry straight up front while reloading the rest of my troops along this road here as they were advancing to this position over here and look at the battle that ensues two rush strategies against each other and these 4080s I sped off to the right so that Shasos can't get anywhere near them to fire their rockets you see how much I decimate his army with the T80s his heavy armour support comes in too late and from the flank from both sides I managed to destroy both his leopards he uses Jaguar 2s but doesn't keep them back they are long range ATGM vehicles for the NATO side You've got VABs, which are full of chasseurs. You've must have brought in about 16 down this road, but 
but unfortunately due to the power of the Topaz uh, recordless rifle I managed to absolutely destroy his army with that. Again you can see the, the how valuable his recon was so he kept it back. He has uh, two looks on this side and one looks on this side. I moved my T-80s to the right side to hit this group of units that are coming down here. Now that he knows it's a rush, he's desperately trying to get to my base because he knows it will be less defended. Now, while I'm shooting these vehicles over here, you can see that they ca catch out my BD BRDM. Now, this is a very bad move for me because I didn't supply it with any AA at all. And you can see how important it was because his Kiowa uh, light recon helicopters are managing to do damage to it. Very slowly, but they are managing to do it and they eventually take that out quite easily um, with the help of this task force here now the thing that he did that I didn't was he split his rush now that's why I won so easily in the middle because I had quantity over quality whereas in the sides he has outflanked me completely if I go to his point of view he doesn't have many units left at this point because most of his rush was destroyed including his heavy tanks but if you don't mind the lag um, his uh, two task force that come down on the right and left side contain a looks and some VABs which can be very lethal if they bumped into my own troops um, I bring in a Havoc to uh, scare off uh, or quickly take out his Kiwas. The Havocs come with auto cannons, which can decimate uh, light air uh, aircraft vehicles at short range. But unfortunately, due to some luck on his part, his Lux manages to somehow destroy my Havoc at reasonably long range and with reasonably good accuracy. And you can see that just by firing it from that range with a look, he managed to get a lucky last hit and destroy my Havoc, which gives him 165 points. Now, I am shitting my pants at this point because he's destroyed this BDRM over here. And if he destroys this BDRM, BDRM or BRDM here, he I lose the game for good. So, it's just as well that he stops his looks here because if he'd managed to destroy that BRDM, I, yeah, I would have lost the game. Now you can see that these Moto Shoki come in handy up here to defend from the VABs he, he manages to get past my T-80s down the road. The Jaguar is still firing at the Topaz at this point, but uh, eventually gets picked off. He's got three VAB squads, that, no, three VABs that managed to get very close to my men. Now these VABs are getting close so they can provide anti-air cover for the Chasseur for Mass. Um, they have uh, Brownie machine guns on the top which can be reasonably damaging but luckily due to my M924 uh, rockets they managed to uh, stun them before they can pick the right target and he kind of panics with these and I managed to get my BDRM to safety and stop it so I can bring in extra uh, support from Bravo now uh, you can also see that I've managed to reorganize my troops into the remaining APCs and bring them back to help against the Chasseur for Mass. And you can again see just how powerful that uh, recoilless rifle is against the Chasseurs. The good thing about that is that the inaccuracy from the Topaz doesn't matter against infantry because of how largely they are spread. Um, it also can do quite well against very large units. And yeah, so that's basically it now. Um, if I go to the neutral perspective, you can see that all he's got left now is a Kiowa recon helicopter. I've got my T-80s rolling around in his base. And the I somehow miss his main base and his command vehicle manages to get away. Um, my strops... Now this is a thing that I really wanted to cover because it was a complete mistake by me. Now at the beginning you saw me put four strops with these vehicles here. If I kept them with my main force I would have been absolutely fine against the recon helicopters which he sends behind my lines to kill my BDRM or BRDM. Um, 
but because I am careless, I let the strops roll on past at 100 km or 100 yeah 100 kilometers per hour, and get to golf before any of my other troops do. So they're left out on their own, which could have been fatal, like to begin with. But if he'd brought any more a or if he'd brought any more a aircraft in or helicopters then my army would have been completely destroyed because I was kind of sleeping when I was using my straps. Now, the reason I didn't care so much then was because I didn't see any uh, lethal helicopters to my rush strategy. So I didn't really care about where my AA was until I realized that his recon helicopters were attacking my, um, were attacking my base command vehicles. Now, you can see there, he managed to sneak another helicopter around to the back, which was one of the ones I'd already damaged, and tries to ha take a shot at my BRDM, but my Igla manages to take that down just fine. And, yeah, so I start to bring everything back to the uh, base here, and sort of regroup just in case he had any aces up his sleeves. But I pretty much know that I've won now because... If you look at the points, he's uh, he's got 600, I've got 100 or 1,447 points. Um, so it's a pretty certain victory for ma me now because I know how much of his forces of the 1,500 he starts off with I have destroyed. It's just a matter of finding his last command vehicle or destroying, destroying more units or the remaining units so that I can win. And these are two things that I didn't pick out during the original original rush. Um, I had a secret weapon, really, um, four BTRs with conkers in them, which uh, basically supplied like heavy ATGM support to my infantry, which is very good for taking out the crappy APCs. Um, with his command vehicle at Delta, he decides to bring in some really cheap inf or cheap cheap tanks for a last ditch effort. But my MI-24s managed to take out a couple of them to finish off the game. So, yeah. He was level 69, I was level 39. We both just tried to rush each other. The game only lasted for 11 minutes. And, um, yeah, it was a proper rush game with a really awesome battle. So, yeah, a cool game. I hope you guys have learned something based on rush strategies uh, in this uh, commentary. But uh, other than that, hope you enjoyed it guys and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.